once I stopped running, I finally felt that security that I was always looking for. I had found it with God. Hey guys, so by the title of today's video, as you saw, today I will be sharing my life testimony, which I will say I have been putting this video off for so long. It's been in my heart to film this, but it's very scary. Putting yourself out there on the internet for everyone to watch my life story. Obviously, I know that I'm opening myself up for judgment and criticism, and it's very scary, but I really felt like God was putting in my heart to share my testimony, share my story. I don't even know how to explain. I had this overwhelming feeling that told me, Kim, I need you to share your testimony. You have been putting this off. There's someone out there that needs to hear your story. I need you to share it now. And I started praying and I even asked my sister, like, please, I, I've been wanting to do this. Please pray over me. Fear and doubt clouds over me when it comes to this, but I know that God needs me to. And so as hard as it is for me to put my life out there, I hope that you can listen to my story with an open heart, open mind, and don't ever feel like I'm trying to push something onto you. I'm simply sharing my life experiences that have led me to my beliefs where I am now. At no moment do I want to force something onto you. So with that being said, I do have a few disclaimers that I would like to put out there before we begin today's video. I am going to be talking about really sensitive topics that might trigger you, so please, if you are not ready to, you know, hear someone talking about this, you know, I am just giving you that in advance. I will be talking about child abuse, domestic abuse, suicide, drugs, very, very sensitive topics. So full disclosure, now you know, beware. Before I get into my story, I wanted to go ahead and take some time to pray over this video. God, I just pray that you use me today, that you use my story in a positive way, God, that, that my story is used to guide others to you. And I ask that you give me the right words to say unto the person across the screen, God. I hope that you open their hearts, that they can find peace, God, that if they went through what I went through, God, my story can encourage them, can give them hope that you can take them out of any situation, no matter how bad it is. And I pray that if they are dealing with depression, anxiety, suicidal thoughts, God, I pray that you take those away because those are not from you. Those are from the enemy. God. Give them the hope and the peace and the joy that they deserve. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Let's start with a little bit about myself. So if you're new here, my name is Kimberly. I am 20 years old currently, going to be 21 in June. I was actually born in Mexico. My parents actually came over to the U.S. when I was two years old, so I was very, very young. But we are first-gen immigrants here. My story begins before I was even born. Just wanted to mention I have an older sister and a younger brother. We're just going to get straight into it. It might be harsh, but this is just the reality of what my life was my real dad and this was when we were still in mexico he had gotten pretty bad into drugs to the point where he started becoming very very abusive to my mom one day he came home not mentally there and he hit her mind you she's pregnant with me and she passed out my mom said that she could see herself walking in a field like golden grass just flowing with the wind and she was walking towards a light and she was pregnant with me but she said that she felt so much peace that she just wanted to reach the light like she you know she could hear a little girl crying in the background and she was like wanted to turn around but at the same time she's like no like i'm gonna get to the light um but she would hear the little girl crying and so she turned around and it was my sister that was crying to her to come back and so my mom said that as soon as she turned around to look at who was crying she came back to like reality she snapped out of it while she was fainted she obviously wasn't getting oxygen and neither was i i was like going crazy in her stomach trying to survive so fast forward a couple years my mom gets pregnant again has my brother and eventually she finally realizes this man is gonna kill me like i need to leave again fast forward now we're in the u.s now my mom is a single mom we don't know english we're having a very very hard time adjusting to this new country from the memories that i have as a child i don't really see my mom in most of them just because she was always working always busy busy because i mean she had to provide i don't blame her at all and this is where my like abandonment issues got triggered i was i would cry for my dad so much but 
I would never cry in front of my mom. It was always like hidden in a room, locked away. Like I would never show anybody that I was crying for him because I kind of felt ashamed. Like, what are they gonna think? Like he was a bad guy, but I'm crying for him. From this point in my life, I was always looking for a father figure and you'll see what I mean. A couple years passed by, my mom meets my stepdad. She told him about us. He was very, very kind to her. He would take us out on like during their like dating stage or like getting to know each other stage. He would take us out all the time. He really convinced her that he was going to really take care of us. We ended up moving in with him. I was in elementary. I was like in first grade elementary at this point. And this is where things just got horrible. So the very first night that we came, that night we watched a movie and then the next day mind you first like first graders he woke us up at five in the morning and he made us start cleaning that definitely should have been a red flag but i mean we were good kids so we did as we were told and my mom kind of just she was yeah a little sus about it i mean what is she gonna do move back like you can't you're here now and so as the months went by this started becoming routine of him waking us up very early in the morning like four in the morning every single day and making us clean the house and mind you it wasn't a big house it was like it was like a trailer like what like a rectangle there's not much to clean but he had us cleaning this thing every single day and so during this time my mom still had to work she wasn't really relying on him for money so my mom was always gone for work so they would leave us home alone and he would give us a list like i want you to clean this and this and that and so the abuse started when he would come back from work and my mom would still not be home because she was still working and mind you we're first graders like how like what's a first grader gonna know how to professionally clean like we were cleaning as best we could like wiping everything down and like whenever we knew it was time for him to come home we would like spray for breeze like make it smell so good like fabuloso on the floor mopped everything clean to the best of our abilities he would come home and would overall look at the place and yes it was clean but it's like he was looking for a reason to get mad at us and so he would like go under a table like in the under parts and the cracks of like you wouldn't even think to clean and he would take his finger and he would go like that like he would with his finger like that if there was any even the slightest amount of dust in one thing he would say you guys did not clean right he would hit us for this and yes first it started with spanking but as the years went by he started punishing us in ways that were not normal anymore but at this point i we were so isolated we never went to family parties no one ever came to visit us we were shut out from the world truly at school i was so shocked and now i understand that this stemmed from being afraid so the abuse started getting worse he was now doing things that are child abuse and I could go into detail, but it's just so many things that he did. Just to give you guys a little taste of what we were going through. For example, our property had a lake. And at night, mind you, over cleaning. Like, it wasn't like we were bad kids that did drugs and we didn't have TV, we didn't have a phone, we didn't have toys. We were shut out. All we would do every single day was work, work, work. And it's like he got pleasure from hurting us. So it would turn nighttime and we would be sleeping. He would come out and he had this military bag, like those long military bags because he was in the army. So again, he had his own traumas that he was dealing with and he was like taking it out on us. But he would wake us up in the middle of the night and it's like our hearts would be pounding because we knew what was coming. He would tell us to get in the bag we were so naive to it all that i feel like it got to a point where we even thought we deserved what we were getting control the tears i can't cry i can't cry i can't cry not yet oh my gosh we haven't even hit the plot yet so we would get in this bag so we would fit in those bags that's how little we were and he would throw that bag into the lake with us in it 
it just it makes me so emotional because i cannot imagine a little kid being thrown in a lake at night in a bag like what i can't believe that was my life sometimes eventually he would take us out and we would be soaking wet and i remember going back inside and my mom just being there i would look at her and she was like the person that was supposed to protect us and she wasn't doing anything to protect us she was allowing it to happen and i think this is when i it started to hit me no one is here to protect us we're living a literal hell on earth being tortured every single day and there was no escape this happened for years and so now i'm in fourth grade about to get out of elementary school so my brother's in school and a teacher notices his hand and so she obviously is starting to get concerned and cps gets called on my parents and i remember i was in school and i was taking a test and i get called in for questioning and they take me to this room where there's two ladies standing there and they have this voice recorder and i was terrified i had no idea what was going on so like they do this without telling like they didn't tell me oh your parents are getting invested like they didn't tell me nothing but i knew something was going on they were asking me questions like does your stepdad hit you does he abuse you this was like my chance to be heard our chance to escape to be you know for him to get in trouble and like justice but all i remember that was going through my head was lie kim you have to lie you have to do it for mom we cannot have her get in trouble so regardless of the fact that my mom was allowing this abuse to happen i still cared so much for her that i told them no whenever we got home that day they did not let us in the house and all you could hear from the inside was yelling he was yelling at my mom i think he was freaking out of about the fact that he could get in serious trouble right now like you're abusing children but what he didn't know is that we lied and we did not tell the truth i'm not really sure the details of how that all went they dropped it and so our life went on and if anything the abuse got even worse so where does god tie into all of this while we were going through all this hell i remember i would go outside at night when the stars were out and i didn't know i didn't really know who god was i just thought you know it was a, a man in the sky we were never taken to church we would go we would go to this youth group which is now the current church that i go to we would go like once every like three years god was out of the picture we we never had that never we never really got taught much about god but i knew that there was a god and i held on to that i felt i felt like that was my escape i was like okay i didn't take that one but god is going to take me out of this god is god is going to be the one to take me out of this so i would go outside at night look up at the stars and i would just cry and cry god take me away i was kind of like jenny from forrest gump where she was like god make me a bird so i can fly far far away like that was literally me like i was like god i don't belong here please take me i don't want to be here god i want to take me with you take me with you this was like every night i kind of just accepted the fact like this is life i hate it i don't want to be here anymore so through the years these negative thoughts of like i hate my life and my relationship with god it just started like my relationship with god i i kind of stopped talking to god because i had been talking to him all these years and nothing was changing so i kind of just i kind of just gave up i feel like at this point i was just so ready to take my life i was just looking for that one thing that would just make me do it that would just make me snap so my parents had two properties one of them we lived in and then the other one we did not it was like basically abandoned but it was still there one day like every day my stepdad started an argument with me about so my mom had like her own restaurant and we would get tips he never allowed us to keep our tips we never had any kind of money of our own of our own even though we worked he would always take it and he thought i had some money and i told him like no i had given it to you i had already given it to him he forgot ended up getting mad at me and told me that i would stay at the property where like it was abandoned and i looked at my mom and she was just there i was like mom like are you not gonna defend me like and she just looked away and that just absolutely shattered me i i felt like nobody cared about me and so i was like 
if I if I was to leave this earth, nobody would care. That night I stayed completely alone. There was no furniture. There was like no couches, no TV. There was just a bed. There was literally nothing for me to do there but just be with my thoughts. Just be with my thoughts. I remember I went into the restroom and I was just crying, crying, crying because I was like, my mom doesn't care about me. Like, nobody cares about me. If I die, no one's gonna freaking care. While I'm thinking this, I'm also thinking someone needs to do something for this to end. We need the police involved. Like, this is getting out of hand. And so I looked in the medicine cabinets. Since my stepdad was in the military, he had the pain prescriptions. And I just thought, I'm gonna do it. It was more than 20 pills that I took. I went into panic mode i started hyperventilating so hard because i think i was like processing what was about to happen that my life would end the idea of my life ending and not knowing what was after was absolutely terrifying to me so i i just get on my knees and i start praying to god god i am so sorry for what i just did but you know why I did it. I have asked you so much for help and no one is helping us. I need to do this and I hope you understand. And so I went to lay down in the bed and I remember just telling myself, just breathe, just breathe, like it's gonna be over. So during this time, I had like this little iPod. It didn't, it didn't have internet or anything, so I couldn't text anyone or do anything on it, but I had music downloaded on this app. And I remember I was like, okay, I'll just listen to music. That'll calm me down. So I put Shuffle on the playlist and this song comes on. I would never even listen to that song on my playlist. Like I forgot that song was even there. And that was the song that decided to play there in the most angelic, vo sweet voice ever. She was saying, I have you in my arms. Don't be afraid. It'll all be over soon. I'm with you. And I just remember feeling like that was an angel talking to me, an angel hugging me. And I remember falling into the most deep sleep I have ever fallen into. Mm -hmm. Next time I open my eyes, it's morning. And I look around and I'm kind of like, why am I still here? Am I am, like, is this real life? Like what happened? Had the pills not affected me yet? Like what i was just so confused and so my mom had come over to like get me the next day i'm laying in bed and it's time for me to go to school and i'm thinking to myself i can't go to school because what if when i'm in school the pills affect me like i'm gonna have a seizure in school like it was supposed to happen last night what's going on I'm like mom i don't want to go to school and she's like what do you mean you're gonna go to school and so then i'm like mom can i tell you i did something and she looks at me and she's like what and during this time i had a boyfriend and so my mom was like what like did you go did you sneak out with him and i was like no there's no way for me to have texted him or anything she like looked at the pill bottle looked at me and it clicked and she went off on me she was like is this your solution to all your problems like taking your life just yeah and and i just started crying and didn't say anything and she went to work and I stayed I was in the state of like I didn't know what was reality and what wasn't just like what just happened like why did those pills not do anything to this day zero side effects from those pills which is absolutely crazy so then of course my mom calls my sister by this point my sister had already moved out and so my sister calls me crying and just hearing her crying it made me feel so guilty. I thought I was helping, but really, I was gonna break them even more than they already are. And that didn't cross my mind. She just cries to me and it's like, Kim, I love you so much. Please don't do it. Like, and it just, and it made me regret it so bad. And I felt so guilty because then my little brother was calling me now, also telling me, Kim, why would you do that why would you want to leave us here and and so i tell them i thought i would help you guys I'm crying i'm crying i'm crying and so my sister made it a priority to always be checking up on me and even though i was a horrible situation something in my mom did click your daughter just tried taking her life because of this you need to do something about it before i continue any further do not do what i did please 
I only got lucky that for some reason God was like, it's not your time yet. Please, if you are thinking about suicide, please do not do it. Do not do it. Reach out to someone. I know it can feel, you can feel so lonely, but you are not. Your family loves you. They might not show it, but please, you are so important and we need you here. My DMs are open for you. I just really want to put that out there. I do not want to encourage anyone to do what I did to get help. That was not the right thing for me to do and I regret it every single day of my life. Do not do it please seek help. So my mom ended up telling my stepdad what I had done and he completely did not want to take any responsibility for it. They ended up separating so my mom came to live in one property and he lived in another but they were still married. He basically told my mom I do not want to talk to Kim. I don't want to be in the same room as her so if we ever walked past each other he would completely pretend like I did not exist so we just did not talk and he always told me once I turned 18 he did not want me in his property he wanted me out which that was very hard because we were so isolated from the world that I didn't know what the outside world was like I was like a lost puppy I had no idea so once I turned 18 my sister she already has her own apartment so she was like come live with me so I do my relationship with God was still not there yet I forgot to mention one day before I turned 18 I was laying in my bed and I I had no idea what like the third eye what the new age spiritual I didn't even know that that's what it was called I had never looked into it if anything I always was scared of like the evil eye and I was scared of tarot because like I was taught I was taught that that was bad and so one day I'm laying down and I'm staring at the ceiling and out of nowhere I have no idea where this even came from I would think that maybe I saw something like this and it led me to like my brain I had I swear I had never seen something like this and I had never hallucinated like I wasn't on anything I didn't do drugs like I don't know how to explain it I saw like all these figures like triangles and circles I forgot I forgot what the word is but it's like these perfect shapes just like like whenever you're on drugs and you see but i didn't know i i had never done drugs before like never ever had touched anything i had no idea what i was even looking at and so i had looked it up and somehow those shapes that i saw took me to the third eye and like opening your third eye and i feel like during this time i was just looking for anything that'll bring me peace and clearly god was not doing that for me so i got really really into the new age spirituality so like the crystals the tarot cards all of that i was so into i would have this journal this manifestation journal well basically just writing my affirmations and i would do this all the time this was like the one thing that like kept me positive and like motivated i was very very deceived and now i see how the enemy tricked me and used this during the time i was very gullible again i had never known what it was like to have my own opinions my own thoughts so like anything anyone told me i believed i was so gullible so i'm really into this at this point i'm finally working i got i didn't have a car so my sister would drive me so i kind of still felt like i was stuck but at least i was working i was saving up my money at one of my jobs it was at a phone company and me and my sister worked together some days we would work different shifts but i do believe this night we were working together i think the store didn't close until like nine so it was like we would stay there pretty late and during this time i didn't have friends so i was really looking for friends and like anytime i met someone i was like oh like are you really into like are you into spirituality like the third eye and stuff and no one was really as into it as i was like i was looking desperately for like those connections and so one night this man walks in and he is not a kind of guy that i would typically ever even talk to so he walks in and he is covered in tattoos at first i didn't think much of it but i was helping him and i noticed his tattoos was like the third eye and stuff and so immediately he caught my attention he was not attractive at all so for me it was not like attractiveness to me it was i need to learn from this guy like he knows what i want to learn i want to learn how to read charts i need to know what my future is going to look like like he knows and so i asked him hey like are you into the spirituality and a third eye and stuff and he was like yeah i know all about it like if you want i could read you your future and i was like 
oh my gosh, yes, I need to know what my future is going to look like. I gave him my phone number and I truly, I was just so interested in learning. Like I really wanted to know my future for some reason. That night I went to sleep and like around midnight, I got a phone call from an unknown number and I was like, maybe it's him. I answered. The way he talked to people was like so kind so selfless which is going to be very important to describe his personality like he would pray before his food like i was like oh my gosh like this guy like he is like on another level of like spiritual like this guy is woke like he knows things that like not a lot of people know and so he started teaching me about how to read my chart if you're not into any of that good but basically to read your chart like you need to give them like your birth the place of birth the time and then somehow the stars i don't know so he ended up getting my chart he texted me he was like kim you won't believe this and i was like oh my gosh what like am i gonna be am i gonna be famous like what is it he was like no like me and you were soulmates like i was supposed to go into that store at that time and you we were meant to meet each other and i was like okay but like i have a boyfriend and like i don't like you like that and he did not want to take no for an answer he was like washing my brain he was like kim you need to be with me because the boyfriend you're with right now he's gonna hurt you he's gonna do this and that and that he was like trying to scare me into getting into a relationship with him i was just like like something deep inside of me something new like girl what are you doing like snap out of it but i just I know it's gonna sound crazy, but I felt like I was under a spell. And I never cheated. I was very open about it with my boyfriend. I was like, hey, like me and this guy are texting. Like I was open about the entire thing. Even my sister caught on and she was like, him, like, I don't know, something about this guy is off. And I would defend him. And the creepiest part, the reason why I do feel like I was under some kind of like enchantment, some spell, something, he would tell me, I go to the cemetery at midnight and I chant your name a hundred times. He told me that and I didn't question it at all. If anything, I was like, oh, he's giving me good luck. Girl, at a cemetery? What? Sister ended up talking to him on the phone and he was like telling her how no me and her were me and him were like meant to be together. Thank the Lord for her. She obviously was in her right mind and she was like, Something is weird about you, like you need to leave my sister alone. And so that day my sister talked to me and she was like, Kim, like snap out of it. Snap she got me to like actually realize like dang, what is going on? So I told him like leave me alone and he did not. Like he he was spamming my phone. So since I worked at a phone company I just changed my phone number. But now I was really paranoid because he knew where I worked. And so one day my boyfriend at the time he came to visit me at work and we went to eat lunch together and then he dropped me off and he left and five minutes after he had left this guy walks into my store and my heart just drops because at this point I'm scared of you like I think you're like a demon he was so upset that I had gone to go eat lunch with my boyfriend and I wasn't with him he started getting crazy in the store he had brought me some flowers like to like try and get me to be his girlfriend and like i was like dude i have a boyfriend like leave i am not a cheater like i leave me alone and so again god was watching over me because he had a dog and he had his dog in the car so whenever he walked into the store he had left his dogs in the car even with the windows down but somebody called the cops thank the lord so then the cops come into the store like mid him like freaking out and I'm like, oh my gosh, like, thank God. You know, so they tell him, like, you need to stay away, whatever. After that, I was just very paranoid. Like, I was like, he, he's gonna follow me home. He's gonna follow, he's gonna hurt me. He's gonna hurt me. Like, I felt like there was a shadow behind me, like, following me at all times. I was so paranoid. So I decided I needed to move cities. Like, I couldn't be here anymore. So I ended up moving in with my boyfriend at the time. And that was a whole other set of problems. I started working at a grocery store. And one day I was bagging a girl's groceries and during this time I really wanted to be vegan or like healthier and I saw that she had really organic things and I was like dang like I want to be like her like she is so disciplined like I need to talk to her and and during this time I still was like very much believing in crystals like maybe not tarot anymore but I was still like crystals heal you like you know and I told her I was like 
hey like are you vegan and she was like yeah and i was like oh my gosh like i really have been wanting to eat healthy and it so happened that she had a vegan instagram page it amazes me how god works so we exchange instagram and i were texting and i'm like hey like do you believe in new age spirituality and she was like oh my gosh yes like i read tarot and like and i was like oh my gosh me and her are gonna be friends and we lived so close together like we were just gonna be good friends i really feel like god needed me to meet her during this time because she went through something that helped me snap out of it and realize what i was doing was wrong she went through deliverance with god i'll link her video down below she has an amazing testimony her name is carla and she tells me that she sees demons these demons are haunting her and that she wants to get out of this tarot like she wants to let it go but she was having a hard time so she started getting more into god and asking god for deliverance and this is key she was a key point to me getting close to god again while she was going through her deliverance she was very communicative with us so she shared her story with me and she told me how tarot was actually evil and like it was demon which after everything that i've gone through with tarot it really really is not good you are opening portals to things that you shouldn't be and you are allowing demons into your life I obviously got scared because I was like, oh my gosh, she's going through that. Like, am I going to go through that? I need to stop trying to like look into my future. I need to let it go. And so I started taking baby steps to getting closer to God instead. Again, I was always in search of something that'll make me feel good. We actually hung out for the first time and we were in her car and she was telling me like her whole experience, which again, you can check out on her on her channel. But I remember when she was talking to me i had never seen demons like i never saw anything like that but that day when we were in the car and we were talking it's like her face turned into like the devil's face and it freaked me out like i wanted to start crying in that moment but she was still going through the deliverance so there was still things attached to her and i saw it but i thought to myself i can't tell her because she's gonna freak out and I don't want to freak her out like she's already going through it so i was like no like kim you cannot cry right now like, you need to stay strong like if you tell this girl we're we're both gonna just freak out and like something bad's gonna happen so i hold it in and i don't tell her until like a couple months later i'm like hey carla that day when we were in the car i saw this and she just started crying to me and she told me like i'm so glad you did not tell me now she is a devoted woman to god and i see how god used her again for her testimony her testimony is so powerful and so i'm getting closer to god but i still don't have a church so i start praying to god god i need community i can't do this alone and i start to see how my mom is also changing she's also going to church she's apologizing to us for everything that she allowed happen to us and i just begin to see how god's working through with my family so i reached out to one of the girls that goes to the church that we would go to like rarely and i'm like hey like is there any like youth group you can go to and she ends up telling me like come to come to sunday service with me and i was like okay i'll go and so i went with her the feeling that i get from being in church and praising god is unlike any other nothing from then on out i just began to talk to god about everything and god revealed to me how everything that i went through was my testimony and i needed to share it and so god revealed to me that although my parents never took us to church never talked to us about god or anything like that the holy spirit was always with me that is how i knew to pray that is how i knew that something was there and although i lost my way i came back because the holy spirit was always calling my name god has big plans for me that's why the enemy wanted to break me from the beginning he wanted to turn me into an evil person he wanted me to hold resentment but god freed me now my family is closer than we have ever been me and my stepdad are on great terms now and like i mentioned earlier i felt like i was looking for a father figure i always anytime a grown man would be nice to me 
I would always tell my mom, like, I want him to be my dad. Always just searching for a dad. And when I found God, I found my father. He is the one that gives me the unconditional love that I was always seeking. He is the one that gives me joy. And once I stopped running, I finally felt that security that I was always looking for. I had found it with God. And it truly just amazes me how God can use someone as broken as me. Someone so shattered and use it for good. I can honestly say that my life has never been better. I know my self-worth more than I have ever felt. I feel like I'm glowing all the time. I feel this love radiating from me. I want to share my love. Right now, if you're in a place where you feel so stuck, like there is no way out, let God in. Let him help you. He wants to help you. And I and I just feel like I have to say if you went through something like how i did or maybe you're going through it right now and you just feel so hopeless so like there's no way out it is so very easy to turn evil and to let your heart get cold after going through so much in life after getting hurt so bad it is so easy but what i didn't realize was that was that God wanted to set me free from all the pain that I held in my heart. But the enemy deceives and he says, no, like, don't forgive this person. This person hurt you. But you carrying that weight on yourself, that resentment, it's causing your depression. You have this shadow following you all the time that's preventing you from being happy. And God says, give it to me. You know, let him set you free. He set me free. I am sitting here in front of you as someone who was tortured as a kid, almost killed multiple times. Let it go. Set yourself free. A lot of people forget that like us, Jesus suffered. He was murdered. Cold blood murder. He was made fun of while they were killing him. And still, he sacrificed himself for us. He loves us so very much that he gave his life. God gave the life of his own son to save us. The enemy is a deceiver. He comes to steal, kill, and destroy. He does not want you to find happiness because he knows he will lose you. As someone who did not believe, who felt like, God, where are you? Why are you allowing this to happen? Just know that we all have free will. The person that abused me was not of God. He was of the enemy. And that's why he hurt me. If he would have been of God, he wouldn't have done that. Someone that has God inside of them would never do anything to hurt you. Remember that. That's the enemy. Don't be deceived. There's so much that I didn't include. It's 20 years of life, you know. This is just a summary of my life. And maybe you're not fully convinced yet. But all I have to say is, what do you have to lose? And just remember, God cannot help you unless you allow yourself to be helped because we have free will. So he's not going to intervene unless you allow him to. And with that, we have come to the end of the video. I know it was a long one. And like I mentioned earlier, if you need someone to talk to, please, please, I will link my Instagram down below. Do not hesitate to send me a DM. If he can save me, he is going to save you. Once you give your life to Jesus, you will start seeing the miracles in your life. It is so easy to judge someone when you do not know what they have been through. And I say this because I have people tell me all the time, I wish my life was as perfect as yours. You are so happy all the time. Like, I wish I had your life. And they are so shocked when I share with them a little bit of my story. Because they cannot believe that after what I went through, I am the way that I am. I am the result of what God can do when you are reborn. It's like you are a whole new person filled with light and love. And that is the reason why God put it in my heart. Kim, I need you to share your testimony with, with the world. Show the world what I can do with them. Thank you guys so much for your time and for listening to me. This is where I will leave off. I hope you all have an amazing rest of your day or night and i really hope that watching this even if it sparks a little tiny spark in your heart if you feel it i really do hope it's a stepping stone for you of finding your way to jesus i love you guys and i will see you in my next video